Welcome to the Land Doctors Construction Profiles. This time on the Land Doctors, we'll take a look at four of our different projects in various stages of development and talk a little bit about our construction process, the detail and science behind what go into rural construction, and showcase the skill and effort that go into every property. We'll begin with a home construction project that Dr. Kelly Hurt and Ron Ward have been working on that's designed with energy efficiency and costs specifically in mind. Here's Kelly. Hi, this is Kelly Hurt and I've got Ron Ward with me today and we're going to show you the three styles of home construction that we're doing currently. We've got three very different types of homes going, and so we felt it was a good time to bring you out and show you the options that you have if you're considering constructing a new home on one of the ranches that we sell. So we're gonna start out with a ICF home. That's, that stands for insulated concrete form. So we're there now, so we're just gonna go on in and start looking around. Uh, this home is almost finished so there's a bunch of crap laying around but never mind that we just want to show you the construction portion of it so come on let's go in so the main thing that you need to know about icf construction is mass thermal mass um, it's how this type of construction works you have a six inch thick uh, strip of con re uh, steel reinforced concrete that's sandwiched on each side by two and a half inches of styrofoam. And then outside of that, you have your regular uh, brick masonry, in this case, on this house, and then your sheetrock on the inside. So you wind up with a very thick wall. So as you look at the windows or the doors on this house, you'll notice that there's a really thick wall there. And so this thing in terms of building construction is at the tippy top. Um, it's extremely durable. It is about as weather resistant as we can build because it is, it's still reinforced concrete. And from a, an energy efficiency standpoint, it's wonderful as well because it's so tightly sealed. You've got all this thermal mass. It's hard for the exterior temperature to affect the interior temperature. Ron has something he wants to tell us now. Speaking of the energy efficiency, this wall will average an R40 value because of the styrofoam, the concrete, the brick, and the drywall on the inside. So one of the things that you want to make sure you do when you build a, a high uh, efficiency home like this, if you're going to spend all this money on an ICF construction, don't go cheap on the doors and windows. So you want doors like this one. They're a high quality door that seal up. You don't see, you know, light around it where air can come around this thing and come in. It's got a good seal all the way around, minimizes the air loss uh, so that, it, you know, you get these drafts in and out. So good doors, if you're gonna spend the money on this construction, you gotta have good doors. These are casement windows. The great thing about a casement window is that you have three points of contact when you close that window instead of just one little latch or two latches on a single hung window, this window operates from the side. And the, and the screen is not installed yet, but the screen actually goes on the inside of the window, not the outside. The other great thing about casement windows is you get the effect of a full picture window without any dividers in it. Okay, so Ron just mentioned the difference between this and like a single line window. This locking cam here, what's really cool about that is if you come over here, you can see there are three different attachment points there. Whenever you work that cam, that lever, it pulls in this window in three different spots against the seal to give you that really super tight uh, fit. And instead of just a single seal at the top and the bottom on a single hung window, you have a seal all the way around the window, which is very similar to a refrigerator door when it's shut. LED lights. LED stands for light emitting diode, and they're a lot more energy efficient than the old bulbs that we've used. So they don't put off heat, they don't heat up your house. They, they use a lot less uh, energy, so it is all part of the energy efficiency we're trying to achieve. Now let's go look at some more stuff. Along with the energy efficient 
items in this home. Uh, the customer also picked out a induction electric cooktop. And the difference between an induction and a regular radiant heat cooktop is the surface of the cooktop does not get hot. It only heats the metal pan that you put on the cooktop. Okay, so Ron's saying that this is induction. This thing's not hot. It's on. Ah! It's not hot. But, yeah, it's not. it has to have a pot on it to get hot. It has to be a non-carbon type. So my ring would get hot if I set it on there. Metal. But my hand won't. Yeah. You know, stainless steel or something like that. That's great for kids. Yeah. Oh. And it's also a lot more energy efficient than a radiant cooktop. It's, how do you know it's on? You gotta put something on. Put something on. Wow, cool. So some people have a hard time making up their mind. Do I take a shower? Do I take a bath? This little area, you can do both. It has a tub um, here, and it also has a shower, and the shower drain, and the shower controls here. So it's all in one kind of thing. It's almost like an RV uh, where they have the toilet and the shower all as one thing. This is a shower and the tub is all one thing. So dive in here and take a look. It's kind of interesting. So, you know, we got metal roof on both the house and the garage. And the garage is really cool looking because we did soffits and everything on it to make it not look like a metal building. But uh, the interesting thing about the design of the roof on the garage is that it is set to maximize solar gain from the solar panels that will be put placed on the roof. So in addition to everything else, this house will also have a solar power system. So insulated concrete form house, steel, brick, it's got concrete, steel reinforced concrete sandwiched by styrofoam. I mean, it's rock solid. It's almost bulletproof except for the windows, but the windows are high efficiency. Uh, all the appliances are high efficiency. All the lighting's are high efficiency. The heat and air is high efficiency. This is state of the art. This is as good as we can build them. Uh, the style is up to you. We can make it look whatever you want it to look like, but this is, uh, this is a really, really, really well-built house. Now let's go look at a different one. What really makes a property special is the little details. Moving on to our second property, Kelly and Ron take a look at the choices and decisions that go into creating a home that's specifically you. Here's Kelly again to show how often it's the little stuff. Okay, so this is another style. This is more of the standard construction that people used to, or used to see, and this is stick frame. Um, and here we're using you know, your normal studs that you frame the house with, and then we use the spray foam insulation to create a high efficiency envelope, and then use the good doors and the good windows to give you a high performance home, but more traditionally built. I mean, we still use solid wood, real rock, great foundations, but it's just more of a normal construction than what we have done with some of the other styles. So let's go on in, we'll check it out. So I really like some of the selections on this house. I'm gonna point them out as we walk to another efficiency type thing that they did here. So, okay. so we've got two different kinds of windows in this house. One is just a fixed pane window. It doesn't open, um, but it's, it's a high efficiency window. Gives you a great uninterrupted view of the outside, which is a big, you know, a big thing when you buy a ranch and wanna have a real pretty view you don't want a bunch of dividers in it so we tend to do these big clear window panes and then ron has a different style again we're talking about the casement type windows this is a little bit different style again it uh, of course we just have the temporary latches and stuff on right now but again we have the three point contacts when the window shuts with unobstructed view. Now these windows will also have the screens on the inside. On this home, the customer selected to do a geothermal HVAC system. It, it, with your geothermal unit, 
everything is on the inside. So, and this unit is really quiet. There is no outside condenser unit. Your outside condenser unit is your geothermal loop that's in the ground. We have three 350 foot ground loops out in the customer's pasture. And it worked out real good. Uh, he's real pleased with it. One of the other great things about it is we don't have it installed yet, but uh, hopefully tomorrow. This unit will also assist with the hot water tank. Uh, this home is total electric, so with the total electric hot water tank in place here, there will be some piping installed that will assist the hot water. So just in case you didn't know uh, how a geothermal system works, the loops that Ron just mentioned, those have water that flow through them. And they flow through these loops that are buried underground. And the, why that's important is the subsurface stays at a ambient temperature of around 65 or something. And so when that water flows through the soil like that, if it's colder than that, it brings it up. If it's hotter than that, it brings it down. So the geothermal system can act both as a heater and a cooler because it brings it to that ambient temperature that's in the subsurface. And so your heat and air system has to tweak the temperature just a little bit to get it to where you want it to be. And that's why it's worthwhile to do it because it's using a natural phenomena to heat and cool your house and maintain it at a stable temperature just in case you want to know. So all of our homes are 100% custom designed. Nothing is cookie cutter. Whatever you want, we can build it. So we don't spend a lot of time showing off, you know, this thing or that thing because we build whatever you want out of whatever you want. So one closet, I can't reach from one side to the other. And then in this closet, I can't even stretch my arms all the way out. So I'm gonna let you guess which is the his and which is the hers. So the cool thing about building on these properties out in the countryside is you get that, you know, and we can work the house, the orientation of the house, the views out of the windows and everything to capture that, which is like golden. It's wonderful and the point of having a place out in the country. The most important part of any home is a solid foundation. Here at The Land Doctors, we pride ourselves in using the latest techniques and science when it comes to creating a foundation that will last generations for our clients. Our unique process is both incredibly effective while also being cost effective for our buyers. Here's Kelly and Ron to fill you in. Regardless of what style house that you might want, we do the foundation the same on all of them. And we do a high um, strength foundation called a post tension cable uh, slab. And the secret behind this type of, of application is instead of using rebar to reinforce the concrete, we use cable that is encapsulated in a plastic sleeve that can then have tension pulled on it. And so that way if there's any kind of uh, uh, cracks or anything where the slab might want to separate, those, those cables keep it pulled together tightly so that the slab can't shift or move and those are the things that cause you to have windows and doors that won't open and shut correctly. So this type of foundation uh, is a way not to have those kind of problems. This is a way to have a house that will perform 20, 30 years from now just like it does day one because the, the foundation is stable. And so the stability starts with the footing. So we do a nice large footing. What size footing do we do normally? Depending Ron? on the size of the house, it'll be anywhere from 20 to 24 inches wide, 20 to 24 deep. So you would consider the 24 inches to be a spread footing, yes. correct? Okay. So, and, and the reason that is, in my mind, that we call it a spread footing is we're spreading the weight out on a larger bearing surface in the subsurface here. Now, one of the keys to having a good stable foundation is we'll come in at the very beginning and remove the topsoil and that first layer and we will bring in select fill and we will compact that to 95% compaction. 
So everything that we build from that point forward is on top of the stable base that we've come in and compacted. So we'll dig into that to create this 24 inch wide by maybe 24 inch deep footing that has steel running in it both horizontally and vertically. We pour that full of concrete and then we allow that to cure. Then we come back and we place in all of the plumbing and you'll see the blue pipes. Those are the cold water supplies, the red pipes, which will be the hot water and the white pipes, which are the drains. So each one of those is, is a sink or a toilet or a shower. And so all of that stuff is placed in exactly where it needs to be. And then we bed all that in sand. We do a pre-treat for, for termites and then we put a vapor barrier over the top of it. So regardless of what time, type of home you want, that's what goes into the foundation on the front side to make sure you never have an issue with your home because the one thing that's the hardest thing to fix is a bad foundation. So we want to make sure we nail that from the beginning. These are the forms. Here's the plastic that's been laid down with the pretreatment for the termites beneath it. So we have the rebar that's coming up out of the footing that I'm standing on with my left foot, okay? So we will pour the concrete and it will encapsulate the end of this cable. And this is the dead end of the cable. You can see that the cable is sleeved. So that allows us to pull tension on this cable from the other end. So when all of the, of the cables are in here, they will form a mesh where you've got some running this way and some running this way. And so when you pull all of them tight, it sucks the whole slab together and it can't separate no matter what happens. And so now we'll go look at the other end where they'll actually pull the cable through. So there is a hole through this piece of wood on the back side of this form. So the cable will go through the front of this block, through this cone, and through the hole that's in the wood. And they'll actually have a little piece of cable sticking out on the outside of this form. So once the concrete is poured, this will be embedded in the concrete. The end of the cable will be sticking out through the back side of this form. They'll actually take the forms off and after they've allowed the concrete to cure for about 10 days, that's when they'll pull 25,000 pounds of tension on each one of these, uh, of these cables. So that's a tremendous amount of tension that they're pulling to make sure that this slab never separates. Every house is unique, so that means that every house gets its particular own post-tension design from a post-tension engineer. So. This house may have X number of cables in it, but the next house we do may have more or less. I'm sure you've noticed in, in the video that you see some trenches, looks like it, in the slab here. And what these are are grade beams that give you more strength. And they also have a lower cable and an upper cable in each grade beam. And also on the outside edge. The rebar that you see that is sticking up in here will actually be bent over into the slab. So unless you're here that the day that the concrete's poured, you don't even know what you've got in your slab. So watching this video, you actually see what goes into making a good slab that'll last for a lifetime of your building. But it's all these little details are super important and that's, that's why we spend so much time on them. So to wrap all this up, we bring in soil that we stabilize by compacting it and that gives us a rock solid base to work from. Then we put our footing in that and then we build the post tension slab on top of the footing. And so it's those three layers that work together to give you a super stable foundation that'll serve your house well as long as you'll use it. It's the best foundation that we can build. And the great thing is with every house design that we do, we actually have a foundation engineer who designs the slab for us. We build it to their spec, they come out and inspect it. So we have someone that looks over our shoulder to make sure that we lay the cables in and do it just like they want it before we ever pour the concrete. And so that's just a layer of inspection to make sure that we've got everything just right because 
one thing we can't undo easily is the slab. We gotta nail that. And so that's why we're so kind of, I don't know, picky about how we do the slabs. We wanna make sure that your door's always open and shut, your window's always open and shut, and you don't have big cracks in the floor. So that's why we do all that. Our last and final stop is at something the locals like to call a barn dominium. Using a unique construction process, Kelly and Ron are able to create endlessly customizable residences using a relatively cheap construction method that involves several of the building processes that we've covered so far. Here's Kelly to explain a little bit more about what goes into this increasingly popular style of build. So this, this is another style of construction that, in, that is a barn dominium, um, is what it's commonly called now. But basically, you're building a metal superstructure, a metal shell, out of engineered um, bolt-up uh, steel that you skin. And then inside that, you build a, a wooden structure for your living space. But one of the things that we like to do is completely encapsulate the entire structure in this uh, spray foam insulation. Now, this is a closed cell foam, so this is actually structural. When you spray all this on all these sheets and all of the framing, it tends to lock it together. Uh, it gives it additional stiffness. If you look, you can see the big beams there that form the, uh, the basically the bridge that goes down to the columns on each side, and these purlins lay across the top of those and so the sheet iron is screwed to the purlins. Purlins are attached to the big beams. The big beams go down to the columns. And it's all bolted down to a, uh, to a concrete slab. So it's a very uh, rigid structural frame. It is somewhere between the wood frame and the uh, ICF type of construction but it is a very, very strong way of building these buildings and it's less expensive than ICF. And it's almost as strong. So uh, this is a type of uh, construction we really like. It goes up quickly and you know the, the possibilities are really only limited by your imagination. We can do whatever you wanna do with them and make a really, really neat structure for you. So let's go take a look around and, and get into this a little deeper. So this will be the commercial kitchen area. So we're going to set this thing up and build it out so that it does meet food code uh, in terms of the, the wall coverings that will be in here, the floor, the way that the sinks and everything are set up. And they'll be able to use this for commercial grade uh, food prep if they want to. We're going to have a large refrigerator, a freezer unit right here. Excuse me. Freezer. So this will be a walk-in freezer. And then we've also, we're gonna have some cool storage uh, in the safe room. So you can see the styrofoam blocks. Well, behind this is concrete. So this is a safe room that's rated for, what class of tornado room? F5? Uh, it has the, it has the tornado doors on it and everything. But, you know, when it's not stormy, they've got a lot of space. With it having the concrete and the uh, styrofoam on it, it's gonna stay nice and cool in here. So this will be a great area for them to do, you know, basic cool dry storage. Um, and, uh, and when it gets bad, they can all come in here. Tons of room. Uh, it won't feel claustrophobic. So in case you've ever been in a storm shelter with a young child with an upset stomach, it's great to have a toilet if you need it. So a toilet and a safe room, what else could we ask for? So one of the things that's kind of fun on these types of projects is dealing with the different clients and finding unique ways to use space. And one of the things that you run into with the slope of the roof as it goes down you start running out of headspace on these upstairs uh, layouts. So what we did here, which was I think a great use of, uh, of space, was to build in these beds. 
This will actually be beds that are tucked in under this lower part of the roof line here. And they've got a bunch of kids, I think five. And so, you know, here's one, two, three beds, a fourth bed there. And, uh, and then there's another one in another room. And it's a great use of space. And then if you look just beyond that, you can see that it's even decked back there. And that is uh, accessible by another door space over here so they can get back there and use all that for storage. So really, every bit of the space here was put to good use. So if you look closely, you can see the, the steel framing here. And then you see the wood framing on the inside. So since Ron's smarter than I am, he's gonna to explain to you why it's important how these two interact together. We try to, um, in most cases, to keep the two frames independent to the point. We still attach some trim materials uh, to the wood and to the steel at the same time. And to be able to do that, to keep condensation down, uh, you know, from the metal to the wood, what we will do, we will line this metal with a membrane uh, similar to some taping material that we use on exterior house wrap. Uh, we found that works as good as anything. Uh, of course, on any metal structure like this, that's one of the things you have to be concerned with is with condensation. And we take care of that through the HVAC system by bringing fresh air in on a regular basis either with an ERV system, that's an energy recovery unit, or a fan cycler. With a fresh air duct coming in, usually a six inch will do it, and we will try to do at least two and a half air changes per hour. That way you don't ever have to wor worry about any stale or any moisture in the air. In this video you've seen the ICF which is the insulated concrete form. So that's the sandwich of foam, concrete and steel, and then more styrofoam. And on the outside of it, you can put brick, you can put siding, you can put anything you want to. On the inside of it, you can attach your sheetrock or whatever you want on the inside. Fully customizable. Very, very, very uh, energy efficient very durable, very uh, storm ready. The, that's kind of up here. That's the top of the line, best we can build them. Then you saw kind of the standard type of construction, which is our stick frame. And just, you know, it's just as good a house as any other house. It's just not built to that same level with those types of materials. You know, it's, it's Pretty much what all of humanity lives in is more or less the stick frame house where you've got your dimensional lumber for the frame, then we tie that all together with sheathing, and then we put rock and, and you know heavy timber on the outside of it to dress it up. On the inside of it, you spray foam it and you sheetrock it. That's a great option also. Uh, and then, of course, this one, which is the barn dominium style, which is the metal building with a wood frame structure built inside of it, which gives you somewhere kind of in between those two levels of the ICF and the normal stick frame, because it is an engineered bolt up steel frame that is very strong, that is connected by bolts to the concrete, and then it's got the metal sheathing on it that's all spray foam together to make it even more rigid. And then inside that, you've got your wood frame that's insulated as well. And in this case, we have a concrete safe room inside all of that. So this is kind of like a happy medium. And it really just depends on what you want. Everyone's different. Everybody's got a different idea. And we're good with any of it. Our goal today with this video is just to show you the options so that you could look it over, consider it, decide what you want to do. But regardless of what we build, we will build on the post-tension slab system that we showed you as part of this video as well. Because that's the basis of everything, is your foundation. You gotta get that right, especially in Oklahoma. We try to build the very best product we can for you. 
and customize it to make it match the ranch and, my, and match your lifestyle. So if you got any questions or would just like to discuss, please give us a call, check us out on the website, and we'll be happy to visit with you as much as you'd like. Thanks and have a great day.